imposter syndrome. You know, one of the things that can happen with social anxiety and having it affect our livelihood, whether it's on the job or a business that we're starting or our artistic, artistic endeavors, one of the things that can compound the issue is thinking that we're the only one that's experiencing this. And that's certainly the case with imposter syndrome. I don't think there's anyone on the planet that hasn't experienced this feeling of being an imposter because here's the truth. We're all just making this shit up. You know, we're all just trying to do the best we can. And at any level of any sort of accomplishment or task or job that we're doing, there's a learning curve and you're never going to learn everything. You kind of just have to wing it a lot of the times. Now, what do I mean by that? The scientist that's using, you know, math and science to, to launch a rocket into space, they have to be pretty confident in what they're doing. But they're going to come up against challenges. They're going to come up against failures. And even they can have a sense of being an imposter. What am I doing? How am I able to do this? Now, what's interesting is that when we have those imposter feelings, we're really sort of going into, it's a form of anxiety, right? And so we're really starting to uh, back off a little bit and r recoil into our shell when we feel these feelings, when we pause and we use them as a signal to reset, reevaluate. Uh, when we do that, when we utilize those feelings to sort of pause and look for a new perspective, well, that's when we can release the anxiety. We make room for new information. We make room for different thoughts, for different ideas, for different inspiration. So one of the things to realize about imposter syndrome is that it's normal and you're going to experience it, but it's just a signal to stop and pause and reflect. Maybe even putting, putting your project aside or focusing on something else for a little while, go for a walk, have a cup of tea, you know, who knows? I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying these are things that might come to you. Some of the great thinkers of our time have often said that their best ideas come to them when they're in the shower. Why? Well, because you don't have a lot on your mind and you've freed up space for new information to come in. So knowing that imposter syndrome is normal and that we all experience it, it's okay. And you may be trying to hide it by overcompensating in certain situations and just know that that's normal too, but it's a result of acting from the anxious feeling. You see, when we act from the anxiety, we, we just don't perform our best. If we create even just a small space between the experience of anxiety and who we really are, even if it's a small window of space where we see that we're not the anxiety, well, that can be enough. That can be enough for us to perform, to be present enough, to be ourselves, to accomplish the thing that we want to accomplish in that moment, whatever it might be for you. But I guess... The one thing I want to say is you're not alone. You're not the only one experiencing imposter syndrome. And so next time you feel that, maybe just take a step back and reflect on the fact that everyone experiences it and that just perhaps you're okay just the way you are. And just reflect on that. Because what if it was true? What if everybody is going through a myriad of psychological experiences in any given moment? What if we're all up and down and left and right? What does that mean about your experience? What does that mean about you taking it so personally? That's all. Just reflect. Because you're not alone. And there is hope.